Democratic Party has a bit of a revolt on its hands. It's all about the primary debates, or rather, the lack thereof. You see, while the Republicans will have at least 10 RNC-sanctioned debates before they choose the next GOP nominee for president, Democrats will have just six DNC-approved debates. And only four of those debates have been scheduled before the Iowa caucuses. And that's led to allegations of a rigged process, most vociferously articulated by former Maryland governor and Democratic presidential candidate Martin O'Malley. Four debates. Four debates. Four debates. Four debates and four debates only, we are told, not asked before voters in our earliest states make their decision. This is totally unprecedented in our party's history. This sort of rigged process has never been attempted before. How does this help us make our case to the American people? One debate in Iowa? That's it? One debate in New Hampshire? That's all we can afford? And get this, the New Hampshire debate is cynically wedged into the high point of holiday shopping season so as few people watch it as possible. Is this how the Democratic Party selects its nominee? Or are we becoming something less, something else? O'Malley is continuing his crusade, calling for protests outside the DNC next week. Bernie Sanders has also called on the party to add more debates to the schedule. And earlier this week, Hillary Clinton herself said she would participate in more party-sanctioned debates. Meanwhile, DNC Chair Debbie Wasserman Schultz is standing firm, saying there are no plans for additional debates, period. That may be the case, but former DNC Chairman Howard Dean said this week, quote, there are going to be more debates whether they accept them or not. Joining me now is Martin O'Malley, former governor of Maryland, Democratic candidate for president. It's good to have you here. Thank you, Chris. The phrase cynically wedged, which you use there, cynically wedged in the height of the... Who wedged them? Why cynically? What's the implication there? Well, I assume it's the chair of the Democratic Party. It certainly wasn't the DNC members, all of whom gave me a standing ovation when I said we're practicing, you know, we're committing party malpractice by letting the Republicans talk about their ideas and their candidates, and we're not saying anything. So I assume it's the chair's prerogative. That's what she says it is. But it's not good for our party. It's not good for the country. We need to have more debates. And some of these are scheduled on weekends, which I think is a purposeful attempt to keep us from being viewed by as many people but as why? we see so them what? on so a weekend. Hillary Clinton, oh, I I say what you're saying, so. That, so that Hillary Clinton can be the nominee. I can't think of another reason why they would do this other than the instinct that uh, party established leaders have to circle the wagons around the inevitable front runner. I mean, I asked in, the, at, at the, uh, in Minneapolis, whose interest does this serve? How could this possibly help us for the fall? And how could this possibly help us get our message out? So I assume they're circling the wagons around the inevitable front runner as her descent continues. And, but it's not good for the party and it's not good for the country. Look, we need to be talking about the ideas that actually matter the most to people around their kitchen table. How we make college more affordable. How we get wages to go up and not down. And also as a party, we have a moral responsibility to push back against the sort of hate rhetoric and the vilification uh, rhetoric and the vilification of people like Donald Trump who are casting aspersions and saying some pretty racist things about whole groups of Americans based on their ethnic background. We need to speak to the generosity and the goodness of the American people. People will say this, you know, th th it's a try, it, it, it's sort of a law of political gravity that people that are ahead want less debates and people that are behind want more debates, right? Because, you know, upside downside, it's very easy to figure that out. I mean, the rules are the rules, and if you were in Hillary Clinton's position, you probably would be fine with six, uh, right? But here's the thing, Chris. <laughs> these rules, the DNC members were never, ever consulted about these rules. And the unprecedented act is this, that any candidate who participates in one of the debates that's not currently scheduled for the height of shopping season or on a Saturday or Sunday morning when we compete with the cartoons right. is punished for not coming in. I mean, what's next? That you can only view the Democratic debates if you subscribe to Netflix? I mean, this is ridiculous. This has never been tried before. Our country needs to hear from the Democratic Party and our candidates. Yes, as a challenger, I'd like a million debates. But somewhere between a million debates and one debate, on the holiday weekend, I think is a happy medium of three debates before New Hampshire, three before Iowa. Uh, and I think, that, uh, I think that there's going to be people rising up in all of the early states saying, this is wrong, this is rigged, it's not right. 